we already did your um, madrigals, but I'm going to go right back to uh, Johnny Got His Gun and a couple things to ask you about that. Um, you were about 18 when you did that film. And uh, Dalton Trumbo wrote it. He wrote the book originally. And he directed it. Um, tell me how he got cast for that, because I think he, he looked at 100 actors before he pulled you in there. Yeah, I'm sure he did. Mm -hmm. It was a controversial film. It was independent film at the time. Bruce Campbell, his son-in-law, who was in part, who had a partnership with Bill Cosby and a man named Silver, mm -hmm. was uh, very instrumental in putting it together, the finances together, and believed in it. Uh, Dalton carried quite a chip on his shoulder, having served a year in jail uh, <laughs> under the One McCarthy. Of the yeah. Um, um, Studios were very much against it, mainly because it was so political at that time. It was the height of the Tet Offensive in Vietnam, and that was a very controversial time. Uh, I had made a choice at that time in my life not to get on the bus. I had to get a lawyer like 10,000 other guys. Um, and just before that, I had met a man named Robert Raison, who was an agent at the time. He was the first agent to become a manager. Mm. He handled Jane Wyman, um, mm. Michelle Phillips, Dennis Hopper, a bunch mm. of other people. And he took me in, gave me the, the possibility of meeting people. And I met Lynn Stallmaster, a lot of casting directors who said, great, you're fine, but we need film on you. <laughs> get, done. get some film. So I, I finally got to audition for uh, Warner Brothers, a Western. It was a television series. They were casting a half-breed uh, for uh, High Chaparral. Hmm. So I got a screen test where I thought, great, I did some film. Hmm. I didn't want to do television. Back then, if you did television, you couldn't become a motion picture actor. A motion picture actor could become a television actor, yeah. as it's completely flip-flop now. Mm -hmm. So I went in with the intention of getting film, and I had David Dortor, the big guy at Warner's. Hmm. I think his name was David. Recently passed. Um, I went in, did this audition with Cameron Mitchell. They brought in some Hollywood horse that would follow you anywhere for a donut. And I was on and off it and <laughs> playing with a Winchester because I'd done all that on ranches and yeah. stuff with you know real horses, yeah. real live ammo. So it was nothing for me. And they said, "Kid, after we did the, the stuff, we we want you. We're going to give you a thousand. We're going to give you seven thousand dollars a week for a guarantee." 13 or 26 weeks. At that time, my father, who was working for uh, a division of General Electric, uh, was called Tempo. It was a technological engineering and military planning operation. He was a presentation specialist. He was making about 16,000 bucks a year. Mm -hmm. So this was a ton of money. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to make movies. Mm -hmm. And my parents had instilled a sense of value even though television was fun, they said, you know, they're selling commercials, and if that's what you want to do, go for it. Yeah. But I said, this is the money I can get to go to vet school so mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. have a good life. And uh, so I did it, and they offered me, I said, no, Mr. Dorton, I, 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 I'm not going to do this. I want to be in the movies, you know, John Wayne and all those guys. But can I have the film to show Lynn Stallmaster? Boy, he got so mad. He said, hey, we just spent 12 grand on this kid. He said, if you don't do this, you're never going to work at Warner Brothers again. You're out of here. I went home crying mm. to my mom. Yeah. I mean, I literally laid in her lap, sobbing, said, I can't take this Hollywood stuff, mom. You know, I finally had the opportunity to get some footage, some filming. And uh, I don't want to do a television series. I go to live down in Arizona for 26 weeks. I want to make a motion picture. And, you know, be up there with Gary Cooper and all those films. Told the agent, he said, "Oh crap! See, I could have made you all this money." And I said, "Hey, there's a little picture called Johnny Gun. It's kind of for a very famous director uh, named Dal or a writer named Dalton Trumbo." And I said, "Mom, I got a an audition tomorrow. It's for a guy named Dalton Trumbo." And she screamed <laughs> and she ran to her room and she came back with this book. She said, "This is the greatest anti-war book in the world, and you get to meet this man. Oh, I'm so proud of you. This is so wonderful." This is just incredible. So I got in my Volkswagen, I drove to LA, and um, I found a place that was on Sunset, 
and I walked in and I knocked, I was kind of late, and a guy answered the door, it was Tony Monaco, who was the first AD on it, and he looked at me and I said, hey, my name is Tim Bottoms, I'm here from Robert Ray's, I'm going to audition for Johnny Got His Gun for the part of Joe Bottom. He looked at me and said, no, you're not on the list, kid, but uh, Jesus, you look hungry, why don't you come in and have a sandwich? <laughs> so I went in and made me a sandwich, I was looking, where are you from? I was he opened the door and he looked at me and he closed the door. Another person opened the door like, finally, I felt kind of like you, except nicotine stains like <laughs> this, about that big in a jumpsuit, dark black glasses. You right. have a little bit of a look of dull. Looked at me. Thank you. Looked at me. I kind of waved. And he closed the door. And uh, I found out that was Dalton Trumbo. And he said, we want you to do a screen test tomorrow. So they gave me a couple pages of dialogue. I was so excited. I drove home. I showed my mom the stuff. And she went through the book trying to find the stuff. She's telling me all about you know, the story. So I ended up coming back. You know, there, there was no map quest or any of that. You had to look on the maps <laughs> in those days and try to figure out where I was going. And I'm from Santa Barbara, so it was a little bit, you know, there was a lot of anxiety driving these freeways and stuff. I got in there and I was kind of late and there was, who was there? Tony Geary, David Soule, Peter Fonda. Gee. And they had, they had all done their scenes and I walked in and I uh, apologized for being late and sat down in the room and uh, I got halfway through the rehearsal and Dalton said, that's it, you're, you're, we're going to give you the job. Mm -hmm. And I was just so excited and uh, so I lived with him with Chris Trumbo, his son. His son, yeah. Yeah, they had, he had a place I got to live there. They put me up. Too. They, yeah, they put me up, and, yeah. and so, and wow. I got to live in the house. No kidding. Up on sunset, and for almost six months, I traveled with him back to Cannes when I went to Cannes, mm -hmm. and um, I just remember I got to meet John Lennon. John saw it, Yoko saw it. John said it was probably one of the best films he'd ever seen in his life. And he was like, oh, John Lennon. That was really cool. Uh, but I remember we were in a little house in Grasse, and we were tied for the Palme d'Or. The winner was the go-between. Alan Bates, wonderful mm -hmm. actor. And yeah, Julie really Christie, who I finally yeah. got to meet later. Very good. Yeah. Oh, it was a wonderful film. But we tied for that, supposedly. <laughs> but they gave him a special award. And then the studio started calling to make a deal on the film. And he told each studio to go to hell. Mm. <laughs> and Bruce, I remember Bruce was pulling his hair out. So because the film never made a dime. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it disappeared. And there were like 90 prints. And somebody in Scotland had it. And then I don't know how it ended up coming out. It just got released last year. Or 2009. And you did a beautiful, by the way, the tribute you did was fantastic. Mr. Brenner, Mr. Brenner came. Two commentaries you did. On the oh, film. did I? Yeah. Really well done. Anyway, it was just uh, after 40 years it finally got a release. And uh, I'm glad it got a release, especially today with the, the war machine. It Full gear. That's an amazing. I, well, I mean, did it? But when you did it, you. I mean, you mentioned in the thing you're laying there and. and you know what? Uh, it's told a me. guy whose face is blown off, yeah. and, and his, his, his arms are gone, his legs are gone, but his brain is still. And he's got a penis. Yeah, and he's that. Those things. And Diana Varsity. I like to work with Diana Varsity. Yeah, the beautiful nurse. Diana Varsity. Remember, she was yeah. nominated for Academy Award. Right. Jason Robards, I got Jason to Robert, I twice yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got to know him really well. Oh, it's yeah. really a beautiful film. Oh, so many. Why people. do you think that was? I mean, it's such Cat a great field. Film. How could how could a film that, that was that great just disappear? I mean, was it Dalton Trumbo or what? Well, he, yeah. He I mean, he sabotaged. He sabotaged. He was so he angry yeah. at what they did, they to, him. did to him. Yeah. I mean, Lonely the Brave won an Academy Award, but he couldn't pick it up because it was under the name of Robert Rich. That right. was that is uh, Kirk Douglas's favorite movie. Yeah. And when I called Michael, he just said, "Oh my God, I hope he can get it back because I want I wanted to do a remake with Kirk while he's still alive." Yeah. I took my daughter to the Academy Awards last year, and when Kirk came on stage and started talking, I stood up and started cheering. I yeah. thought, "Here's a movie star." Oh, he is. Yeah. 
I mean, this guy's great. Look at him. Still going, too. Oh, my God. He was wonderful. I was so proud to know him. And so I thought, oh, what the hell? Anyway, oh, God. My choices. Well, after that came the last picture show, which got eight Academy Award nominations. It actually got at least one with uh, Cloris Leach, who you worked with. Oh, no, Jeff did one. Ben Johnson got one. Oh, yeah. Right. Remember Ben Gunn? Well, well, tell me a little bit about him. He really influenced Well, he's a real cowboy. I, I mean, he really influenced your life in a lot. Oh, of yeah. Well, he was the real. He is the real deal. I mean, he world champion cowboy for 1953. Well, at that little pond scene where we're out there rolling cigarettes with me yeah. and my little brother, and then had that lightning storm coming, and he's telling the story about how he knew this girl who was Sybil's mom, and there was mm -hmm. some of that horse across that tank. Right. He actually swam in that tank on horseback when he was a kid because he grew up on a ranch just across the river from there. He knew that. Whole and McMurtry, I mean, he wrote basically right. Basically, just about there, didn't he? Like yeah, it was all about Archer City. Right. Yeah, yeah all based on real, real folks there. They changed the name for some reason. God knows why. They didn't have to. I, I don't know what the, what the hell they changed yeah. the name for. I got to meet uh, the country's dad. Just stick with Ken company. Johnson, though, for a minute. Uh, you, well, you, know, you, worked on a, you worked on a documentary film. Right. Like in fact, they came to shot. I had a whole bunch of mules. I was heading off to Wyoming for a pack yeah. trip, and, uh, and we shot it outside by all the, all the mules there by the house. But I mean, I grew, as a kid, whenever you saw ben, uh, John Wayne, yeah. who was right beside him? Really? Ben was always right yeah, beside him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben, ben Johnson. Ben was always right beside him. Ben was real horseman. I mean, and then when I told Ben about some of the fellows that I got to work on ranches, he said, hey, you know, I got this Cowboys for Kids deal. Why don't you be one of the celebrities and come ride? Because there was only a handful of us that, that mm -hmm. rode and roped and stuff. So I felt really honored that, that Ben would let me be part of that outfit. Tell me about the documentary. Well, I never saw it. Oh, we didn't? Okay. Well, no, but they asked me questions about it, and you know, I was pretty, you know what I was really close with was Warren Oates. Uh-huh. And so, uh, and I, I got to audition for a picture years ago for Sam Peckinpah. They are going to do a Billy the Kid. He was drinking pretty heavy at the time, and, mm -hmm. and I got in through Warren, who was a friend of his, and of course they did the, uh, uh, the get, uh, well, no, the getaway was great. What was that great holden picture where they go back one more time? Uh, that outfit. It was a real shoot. It was a really yeah, good movie. Me. But Warren knew all those fellas and Ben knew those fellas. So the so the so I, yeah, so I, they got. What was the call? It was not the Dirty Dozen. No, 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 no. That was a no. Sorry, World no. War II. Uh -huh. this, this was, oh, oh, go. Oh, yeah. They go back down to Mexico. Oh, the Magnificent Seven? No, 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 no. That and Steve McQueen and Jules Brenner. Yeah, that's right. It was a really good Bill Holden. Wild I think I just Wild Bunch. Wild Bunch. That's right. Yeah, I that own started that. it all. I own that. Right. Do you? Yeah, that's, that's a good one. That was a great one. Yeah. That's Peckinpah. Yeah. Yeah, that's Sam Peckinpah. Mm -hmm. And so the only reason I got it to meet him for Billy the Kid was through Warren and and those and, uh, and Ben. And he said, "Come on, Timmy, let's take five million bucks and go to Portugal." <laughs> And all I could do was talk about Bob Dylan. You gotta get Bob Dylan. He just went to sleep. Because Gustavo did the part, Bobby did the music. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he couldn't get Bobby without him, I guess. I don't know why. Well, great was, anyway. the sound person was great in that film. So yeah, I'll watch it. Yeah, it would have been a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah. I would have been a lot different, that's for sure. Yeah, I've noticed that you've done a lot of literary films, and, and well, I mean, you did um, *The Homeward Angel*. That was a TV show, I think. Wasn't it? That was a TV a, film. A, a David Susskind. It was right. the last of the Playhouse '90s. Wow. Uh, Mr. Bogart directed that, so I got to work with E.G. Marshall. And he played the lead. In that. Yeah. He played uh, Tom Thomas Wolfe, basically. Yeah, right. Yeah. Eugene, Eugene whatever. Eugene Gant. Yeah, Gant. That's right. Yeah. How did that affect you doing? A role like that. I mean, well, I grew up in the theater, so novel. doing theater was just wonderful. Yeah. I loved it, you know, because you do full scenes. Um, even though it was on tape, we do full scenes on tape. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was. So just like doing theater, it was like any breaks. And exactly, and we just go through a scene. Yeah. Go through a scene. And then you also did a remarkable. Uh, the complete version of East of Eden with Jane Seymour, which is yes. wonderful because. What Kazan did, it's a magnificent film, right, but it's 80 a, pages of the book. Uh, that was just book the last generation. Yeah, that's right. Three generations. This starts with a woman when she burns a house. Warren Oates, played it. my dad. Yeah. Remember? And you, the role you Harvey played. Harvey Hart directed, Hart directed it. The role you played in that. Yeah, it was uh, all three generations, went through the whole three generations, the father. In fact, my brother Sam played my son. He, Sam played the part that Jimmy wow. didn't play. Yeah. 
That was produced by some wonderful producers. It's a really great piece of work. I mean, it holds up very well. You can get it yeah. at 50 bucks out of me, but you know, I just thought okay, it. Okay, really? Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you want to borrow mine, I can, I'll give it to you. I think I have it in a box up at the ranch. And Johnny got his gun, and of course you did David from the Bible, so that's right. a good urge for Yeah, yeah. That was a part two film. Right. I played the young David. I'm going to go into some of these films that people have never heard of before. <laughs> And you can tell me a little bit about them. Uh, the Crazy World of Julius Bruder. Arthur Hiller directed 1974. it. 1974. Produced by Hugh Hefner. Was that really? 20th Century yeah. Fox? Yeah, it was a Vietnam, about Vietnam War veteran. veteran. Yeah, Albert Salmi. Do you remember right. Albert? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Sure. Wow. He played the World War II. And, um, yeah. Wasn't World he an War. opera singer or something? He may have been. He was a troubled soul. Yeah. And uh, George Stevens played the World War I bit. Where is that film now? I mean, can I you have get no it? idea. Okay, because I've been trying to track them it's down. It's a Fox. I'm it's good a Fox, at... Fox film. Okay, it's Fox. I think so. But it was one of the few films that that Hefner produced. What did you think of that when it was done? It was Hollywood. It was yeah. you know, it was a uh, God Arthur Hiller. What a wonderful great, man. Great director. I, I hear he's losing his sight. Oh. Sorry to hear that. What a great guy. When was the last so time you saw it? I Has it been it done at a festival or at no. the Aero Theater? Or I haven't seen it for 30 years. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know who was in it? Barbara Hershey. Oh, but yeah. But she called okay, herself Barbara Siegel. You, I meant to ask you about her. It, yeah, she meant to ask when she was married to David. She was in Last Summer with my friend Bruce Davis. Oh, yeah, Bruce. Yeah. Do you know him? Uh, not well. Uh -huh. we met. But we were always at the same parts. Right. Bruce and I were always at the same parts. Yeah. But you've never been in a film together? No, not yet. What was it like working with her? She was nursing her son Free, Free Carradine, who was David's first boy. Yeah. And she had found a seagull and changed her name from Barbara Hershey to Barbara Seagull, so she only got way less money than if she had, was using her name, but she didn't care. No. And she was just a lovely, wonderful, down-to-earth yeah. woman. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Stop, I have to nurse my son! <laughs> He's crying. <laughs> another one I dug. Another one I dug up was was one of my all by all time favorite director of mine, uh, Philip Kaufman, oh, called Philip. White Dawn. Now oh, that yeah. seems this this Paramount one. Picture. This one you should know about because it was shot. Warren Oates. Yeah, Warren again. Oates again. Lou Gossett. Great, great. That movie. was. Uh, oh, um, Oh God. 1896, three white guys. True story. Guys, true girls, story. Into it. Uh, true story. Yeah. yeah. Uh, written by James. Very famous uh, I'll, I'll, sculptor. I'll find it. Don't worry. About yeah, it. but he was a very famous sculptor of 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 glass. Really. He was the governor of the island oh, of Baffin Island for 13 years. Um, knew it intimately. This was shot at Baffin Island. At Baffin Island, oh, Frobisher okay. Bay, and then we we went all over. We went. Uh, I we, gotta find this. We took over. It's on Netflix, right? Probably. It's a Paramount fit picture. You know who produced it? Great producer. He did. Remember. Um, Jack Lemmon won an Academy Award for some Save the Tiger. Yeah. yeah. Same producer. Uh huh. I don't know. Days of Wine and Roses. Yeah, I know what you mean, but I have no idea. Uh, I never know producers. Thomas Williams? <laughs> no. I could look it up. It's all right. Yeah, a great but producer. What was Kaufman like as a director? He, Wonderful. Jesus Christ, he did some some of the greatest. Oh, great director. Ever. He was so, you know, the happiest I saw him. I mean, I, Henry I found and June is like the greatest film I've ever, you know, you see Midnight in Paris, it's a silly film. But yeah. when you see the moderns that yeah. he did, Jesus, oh, yeah. that's the best film on Paris I've ever seen. I love English, Phil. I mean. He was very kind, just considerate. He, he had, he had a, 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 a good DP and a good first assistant, uh, Ch Chapman, uh -huh. who shot Jaws, I think, really? was, was, yeah. was his DP. And, uh, the first assistant was a really good first AD to worked on the getaway too, I think. Wow, yeah, that was great. Um, so it was a really good crew. We took over an old SAC air base that was abandoned and that was our production. But it's like, you know, 3,000 miles north of Montreal. We flew in in May and we left wow, in November. Yeah. And I really, I got to know all those Inuit people. See, yeah, we arrived at 25 below zero we left at 25 <laughs> below zero. Amazing. But we, they brought in all these Inuits from all over. In fact, Annie Hansen, I'm not, I believe she became the president of Inuvik, the newest country in the world. Yeah, because you know? they have their own... And that was my love interest wow. in the movie. Oh. She was married to a Canadian fellow, had a bunch of kids. What a sweet what a, person. What a great story. Joanna C. Salamone. 
In fact, the old lady, Pitsulala, actually knew the whalers when she was a little girl. Oh, That's how she, old she was. No kidding. Going all the way back to the original time. She knew the people. 1896. Yeah, yeah. She knew oh. when she was little. That's how old she was back in the 70s. When you do a film like that, I I don't know if it got real real proper exposure or. The director had a heart attack, or the producer was oh. everything behind it. He yeah. had a heart attack at oh. that time, and it kind of kind of died. Yeah. I think Henry Mancini did the music. Oh. Sounds like a masterpiece. It I mean, was a really knowing how great, great Kaufman was, the right stuff he did. That's a oh yeah, yeah. Film. By the way, did he call you and ask you to? No, uh, he's never called me. I've been, I, I, I mean, was up in been, San Francisco. He would have been great in that film. I love it. That, for some reason, he did that. Probably yeah. because of politics in Hollywood. Really, I think there's a lot of politics in Hollywood, and you know, yeah. if you have a really good agent and a really good manager, and your publicity people and lawyers, and you're gonna and you're with the right. Whatever you do, you'll be yeah. working. A lot of these movies, you'll see all the same people over mm -hmm. and over and over again yeah. because they're packaged. One film I've, I've left out and not on purpose because it's also one of my all-time favorites is Paper Chase. I mean, that, well, was, yeah, that was that is just well, the mind-blowingly beautiful film. Jim Bridges, Gordon Willis. Yeah, he had just done The Godfather as a DP. He worked with Houseman and uh, with well, John Houseman. Houseman. It, it, James Cagney was supposed to play that part. Really. Well, it's good he didn't. Well, I don't know, he was sick, I don't know. So, House now, there, so when I was in high school, I auditioned, I, when I worked with uh, Malcolm Black mm -hmm. of the Ontario and several other people, I, uh, Jack McConnell was going to, I could get a kinsmanship to Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in London. Uh, I was accepted to the first school of, of Cal Arts the first year, mm -hmm. but I wanted to go to Juilliard Acting School. Mm -hmm. And I auditioned, I got turned so, down by the really? house. Mm -hmm. No kidding. Oh, but I didn't know that right away. Mm -hmm. So by the time I, I had some kind of approval back then with Jim Bridges, who was everything behind that picture. Mm -hmm. God bless Jim Bridges. The masterpiece. Well, that was Jim Bridges. But it's beautiful. I mean, the, the two of you, you and Lindsay Wagner, were Lindsay, just wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he's, when we found out that Mr. Talk Cagney, about naked. <laughs> some beautiful naked shots in there. <laughs> but Mr. Cagney couldn't play the part. He said, oh, I don't know what we're going to do. We, we went to New York and he said, hey, I got a friend. And so we went to the school we met John Houseman. Mm. And that's why we chose it. And then John won the Academy Award and I got him an agent. Hmm. Bob Ray's on, and then he made a bunch of money before he passed on. The, I think doing commercials because he didn't really do acting before that. Wasn't no, he, he was. If you read his book, Run Through, mm -hmm. it explains his life and when he got involved with Orson Welles and the mm -hmm. Mercury Theater Company, and how he was more of an organizer producer right. behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. That was John House Kingsfield. Mm -hmm. That's that's who that one, man was. So when you you said I know the guy, I know the guy who this role is. Well, no, I didn't. I, I when I found that I was John Houseman, I, mm -hmm. I kind of cocky, and <laughs> movie star, and young and stupid, and, and I said, Jim, I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Yeah. But there was this little anger in me that I got turned down from Juilliard. And here I was right. yeah. Yeah, able to have. A say in the casting, and it made me feel good, especially when he won. Yeah, I was very, very proud. That was so Jim's decision, and Jim allowing me to be part of that decision. I, I just so many people went to law school when they saw the film, just like you know the one with uh, Dustin Hoffman. They went became journalists, and yeah. you know right, the same right. kind of thing because it made it so exciting. You know? Well, I, 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 I did. Didn't, I, didn't, I did. I did. Could be this great a yeah, teacher. Well, you know, this is an idea because I, I was with. Uh, was it? We, we, I did a George Bush in a, in a not the Comedy Central one, mm -hmm. but the one for Showtime. So yeah, I just saw it. Very Republican DC Nine Eleven. DC Nine Eleven. The Chaplin, uh, Chaplin script, script, and we recreated everything. Uh -huh, right. Uh, another good director. It's pretty right? accurate. It's very, very accurate. Yeah, I'll uh, tell you a funny story about him when we're finished. But the the producer. Uh, Anyway, he came to me and he said, Tim, let's do the paper chase again where you become the professor. Oh, yeah. And so we've been trying to get that at Fox, but for That's some reason very, we just keep nice. hitting a wall at Fox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking, yeah, if I'm going to do TV, this was, would, would be one that I would like to do, particularly yeah. now with Occupy Wall Street and, right. and all of the situations oh, around the world. Exciting, yeah. Bring in a bunch of kids and talk about all these issues. I think it could be a hit television show, and I would be honored to do it, but 
you did it's your so hard to get showrunners in. When you did DC 911, I actually know a lot about Lionel Chetwin. He's a real pain in the ass. Well, for me, but, he but was I'm really... Just, but I'm I, just I wondering, him. did that hurt you at all? Did they figure, oh, this guy's a fucking conservative or something? Because no, he is I don't. a fucking conservative. He's very conservative. Yeah. But no, it didn't hurt me at all. I have, okay. I have a... Right. W's you, jacket. you were right on target. That's a perfect... Yeah. I'm sitting here looking at you and saying, I'm talking to well, yeah, George yeah. W. Well, I'm an old, old... old. <laughs> All my people were Democrats or yeah, independents. It doesn't matter. What well, yeah, so I mean, I, I'm not a Republican. I, I'm just saying, but there was, a, there was for a long time, I mean, a, a real anti-conservative. If a person was conservative in any way, I can tell you five or six actors well, who, it, it, who people wouldn't use because of their politics. Which is well, that's, that's not my politics, but that was the part I played. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, I got really good reviews for not only the comedic aspect of, of uh, President Bush, but also yeah. portraying... Uh, yeah, you did a great job. I mean, you know, and it's really about how crazy a time it was, and it was a perfect right-on portrait of it. And it was a very good script. Ari Fleischer worked very closely with us. It was a very good script that, yeah. that Chapman wrote. Yeah. But, you know, he was an ass kisser. Like, I, I used to work for Wallace Annenberg when she was a story editor for TV yeah. Guide, which her father owned. And so he w she would do these tape recordings of, uh, with producers, and she did one with him. And all he wanted to do was play on her father's golf course. Oh, well, I had a lot of fun having lunches with him. <laughs> I had a lot of great lunches with Mr. and Mrs. Chapman. Well, that's great. We know we, do, we didn't talk about it's movies It's a very at good all. film, you know, and it really yeah. is. It, you, nobody needs to apologize for anything, because anybody who was in, the, in that chair at that time, and the, the oh, chair that you Brian, played, uh, and, uh, and Richard Smith. I mean, the, the look you had, like when when he whispers in your ear, is exactly. Well, that, that's a, a you really you know, hard part. Brian, the director. Um, Tin Man, where you play oh, yeah. a, a deaf guy. Right. That was a little tiny independent. Nothing. We shot it up in Santa Barbara. Nineteen ninety-three. That, that was with oh, with a famous German actor. It was his daughter, and she was just lovely. Um, Eddie, not Max von Sydow. No, not Max von Sydow. You worked with him a couple of times. No, oh God, I can't remember. Not, uh, not uh, um, Well, he was very famous. That, uh, darn it, my brain. Not Maximilian Schell. No, no. <laughs> and we're no. great, great. Movie. He was in Bond films and. It, 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 oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Guy. So anyway, Tim Man was. Uh, it was a small totally film. independent. Yeah. All shot in Santa Barbara. About a deaf guy. Right. Yeah. Uh, I saw it once. Really? Yeah. I'm going to dig this stuff up. Uh, Hurricane, what, John Ford's oh. original, that's one of my favorites. That was Dino De Laurentiis. Yeah. Hey, you want to be in a movie? I'm going to give him a kid a contract. <laughs> All right, Dino. 1979. I loved him. He you was should, wonderful. You shot it where? We shot it in Tahiti. In Bora Ooh. Bora. Uh, yeah, in Bora Bora. And, and so I got to be there with... Uh, he was in the original Mutant on the Bounty. He was the captain. The original Mutant on the Bounty with Marlon Brando. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, <laughs> no, it wasn't a lot. Oh, Marlon Brando. Um, well, Marlon Brando. Oh, yeah. Oh, he was yeah, good. Yeah. Oh, Max Macedo was the priest. That's oh, right. and my, my girlfriend was Mia Farrell. Right, oh, yeah, my gosh, wonderful she's so actor. Beautiful. She's a great actor, too. Oh, really. oh yeah, she, yeah. she had all the babies. No, yeah. Great person. Yeah, she was on her, and of course, uh, Jason was my commanding officer, and I got to meet and work with, a little bit with uh, Jim Keach, mm -hmm. up marrying Jane. Stacy's brother. Yeah, little brother. Yeah, yeah, wow, that's, that's part of the film. So that was a big, that was a big movie. It was a huge movie. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, they tried to recreate that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Did you see the jo original John Ford film? Yeah, you? I mean, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. Beautifully Dor done. Yeah, yeah. Dorothy Lamar. Right. John Hall. Yeah. Beautiful thing. Yeah, we cast a they cast a kid from Hawaii, uh, Jason, mm -hmm. or a people that uh -huh. and that was the problem. Were, I think yeah. it might have been the problem, but yeah. I don't know. But what a wonderful experience! Mm -hmm. I've been to, back to Tahiti many times and just love that beautiful place. place. Yeah. In fact, I was on a plane flying from Papiete to Huahini 
when the news came over. We were right over Teteroa when the news came that Brenda was dead. So I was in the air and I got to look down on his island mm -hmm. when the news came in that he had passed. Did you know him at all? I, I, no, I really wish I did. Yeah. I know I love that guy. I had a couple letters from him because I was doing a, a piece on um, Edward Dimitrik, the, the guy who did the Kane Mutiny, he was the director. Oh. and. Young Lions, which he did oh, yeah, with right. Brando. Yeah. So I wrote, yeah. and he was one of the Hollywood Ten. It's a long yeah, story. Right. But Brando wrote me this wonderful letter back about. I asked what it was like working with Dimitri, and you know, I, like, I sent to twenty people. I got a letter back from Brando and one from um, uh, Catherine Hepburn. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I only have one letter that I really like. But Brando was sensational. He really was. I think for an actor, you look at a guy like that, oh. so much courage. And oh my God! And to see that beautiful just, island that he has, it's just beautiful. So he never met him, or no, oh, I that's a shame. Never got to meet him. I think he would have been really enjoyed. Oh movie. yeah, I got to meet Stephen McQueen. Yeah, I think I was supposed to do a couple of pictures. Yeah. Yeah. It was during Bruder's Hooch, a crazy moment during Bruder. The car stopped, and they were shaking hands. And this guy with his beard jumped up on the hood. And he said, "Ah, you're going to be the star, huh?" <laughs> and it was Steve. And he was sick at that time. Oh. And we were supposed to do a movie. They were trying to put together First Blood, oh. uh, which later became Rambo. Yeah. And we were going to do it like the book. Not, mm -hmm. uh, there was not going to be a part two because everybody died. <laughs> part 12. <laughs> yeah, and, that was, and then there was another thing. And I never got to hook up with McQueen, which is uh, I regret in this life. Yeah, yeah. He was I really wanted to hook up with Steve. a wonderful actor. Yeah. Uh, you did a film called King of the Hill with Steven Soderbergh. No, never no. worked with Steven Soderbergh. Okay. That was probably Tiffany Hutton. Oh, all right. Maybe that's it. I met Steven because he directed the Che Guevara movie. Oh. And my brother Sam was married to the producer, Laura Pickford. And so we did all the military training on my ranch with Benicio del Toro. This, this is group. in your Wikipedia thing, so I'll make Well, that's change. incorrect. I never worked with Mr. Soderbergh. I would oh. like to. But I don't you did know. work with Dennis Hopper though in yeah. 2000 in right. a film called Hell for Ransom. How yeah. that, what was that like? Uncle Dennis, we just played <laughs> golf. You know, Uncle Dennis, <laughs> man, I, I just loved him. Yeah, and a, just, a great okay. artist. Huh. Yeah, but he was free and, yeah. and he had an opinion and, yeah. and uh, you know, I don't think either of us broke 90 that day. <laughs> but we smoked cigars and, and had a great time driving around the courses. We were in... Orlando, yeah. and it's, it's 70 golf courses, so we've got to play golf every day. I, I knew a woman who was the producer of the last movie. She oh, did you? It was well, the worst was... experience of her whole life. Yeah, it was, they wanted to call it the last picture show, <laughs> yeah. but how, they had a little bit of a problem. How, how did that film come out, Hell for Ransom? What's it about, basically? Aside uh, he's, the... oh, well, I, I turned out to be the guy, the bad guy. Mm -hmm. um, some kids. Um, Steal them, put them in a school bus, and haul them away just for money. Oh, you know, like the it was show up thing. something like that. Yeah. I, you know, I had just a couple of scenes. Hell for rats. Okay. Yeah, and, and I, I don't really know. I never saw. How, how would you rank something that? about Mary? She produced the something about Mary. Oh, that's a great. Which was a fun film. So yeah. that was the producer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, how did you like working with Hopper? I mean, as a, as an actor, did you learn anything from him? Or well, I don't know if we even had any scenes together. Hmm. We just played a lot of golf, <laughs> and it was really enjoyable. You also worked with Maude Adams in a film right. called Ringer, 19. Well, that was with Malcolm McDowell. Okay, no kidding. All right. Yeah, she played the madam. Uh huh. And we did that in Vegas, and so Malcolm and I should we spanked the same girls. <laughs> and how did that turn out? Was it? I don't know. I never saw it. <laughs> Okay. I was, I was trying to pay mortgages. And yeah. you, when you get caught up... You, you said you went through a 10-year period where you just... Well, when you get... You know, yeah, and I did other things. I, yeah. I, I became a land surveyor's assistant. I worked a lot of open-range feral horses. Um, I, I got on the schooner for about 10 years with my brother-in-law. We, we, we made motion pictures and hauled cargo wherever we could. I mean, we hauled for, for Costner. We hauled all his propane. We hauled 90 tons the first time and 60 tons the second. All the special effects and everything for them for that Rapa Nui pictures, Naval of the World, you know, where they shot on these. You hauled for who? Kevin Costner. Oh, Costner. Costner. Yeah, we were working for him. He yeah. was producing a movie called Rapa Nui, Center of the World. Uh -huh. They brought all these uh, Maori folks up from New Zealand mm -hmm. and they put them on Easter Island. It was about wow. the migrations and stuff. 
And uh, so we were the only show in town. Boys from Santa Barbara saved huh. his ass. Mm. We moved 150 tons of cargo and all his propane. How did it board. feel to go from uh, acting to business? Well, you know, I loved sailing on the schooner. I got the it's freedom. Right. And I got the surf waves you'll never ever see. Most surfers will never see. Right. And I got to sail on one of the most beautiful scooters in the world, with probably one of the finest captains in the world, Mike Moorhart, you know, mm. my ex-brother. So you really enjoyed it. It was refreshing get away from the Hollywood Well, I've, I've got a lot of experiences. I got to work open range horses all over. I got to learn all about land surveying. Yeah. I laid out, uh, helped lay out uh, with the same outfit for the old Bacon Estate or Oprah Winfrey. Uh, this is in Montecito. Yeah, yeah, I know everybody in Montecito. I'm crawling yeah. under hedges looking for corners of property. Hey, Bottoms, what are you doing here? Yeah. Well, I didn't get poison oak and I know the country and so I'm sticking to corners. I, I, I did a lot of that stuff. You know, I learned, I worked with a plumber, uh, I worked <laughs> with an electrician, I worked with builders. 2006, you did a film called Paradise, Texas. That was a, yeah, that was a wonderful story. Um, and it was for a, a, a man whose son wanted to be an actor and he had the money mm -hmm. and he produced it all himself. Mm -hmm. Then we had a wonderful director and Judy Lowry uh, out of the Paramount cast it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that was one of the few films that I auditioned for that I got the part. Mm. And um, the only difficult time was working with Meredith Baxter Bernie because it was very difficult to get close to her. I, I had this, there was always, there was this invisible thing. Mm. She turned out she was lesbian. Yeah. And, yeah. And, she, and that and that was a problem. And she finally came out. And right. She, and so I kind of, as an actor, you feel things. My wife actually worked for her. I wish I had known about that because yeah. I, we could have dealt with it. Right. But yeah. I worked with her twice as yeah. the love interest, and it just didn't work because yeah. I couldn't get through this right. you know, thing. And uh, I, I think it'll be different now because she's open about it. I hope. Right. <laughs> well, I think that's a big problem, you know, when people are in the closet, you know, when they're trying to hide that. And if they're actors, they're out there anyway, and half the time, like everybody knew Rock Hudson was gay, but he couldn't really? deal with it. Yeah, everybody knew it. Oh, but I mean, they couldn't, business. they couldn't deal with it, and then he couldn't deal with it, and, yeah. you know, so, and I think for a woman, it's even more difficult. So do you think probably not just the acquired immune deficiency syndrome, but the stress mm -hmm. helped create that? Could, yeah, it could be. Do you know what I mean? It's very possible. When you start, when you're such a huge star, and you're susceptible to that, that it just, the stress kind of pushed it over the edge? I think he was always gay. I mean, that, I don't think that, I think Meredith, Meredith Baxter Birdie was a bisexual. She didn't know what she was. Uh, she started out as a... I should have told her I had a little tiny vagina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway. Um, I so I have one... <laughs> no, I'm I have a first, first of all, it's a very, it's a very valid, it's a very valid now, you know, where people can discuss this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's very important for people to be clear as to what the hell they are, you know. And, yeah. and a lot of people are confused. I mean, they, they grow up because their parents tell them you can't be, you got to be what you are, you know. Right. Uh, I mean, it's interesting looking at Malcolm McDowell seeing with little kids. You oh, know, it's, people, it's got the cutest little kids. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a lot of people would think, oh, that's not good. You know, but that's stupid. 70, that's stupid. 70 and a half, yeah. two year old. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's wonderful. Absolutely. Charlie Love Chaplin did that. Yeah. Turned out yeah. pretty well. Yeah, what a wonderful uh, So, my last question is about five films here. How would you compare your first five films with your last? I'm going to read them. I, these may not be, but I think they are. Uh, Land of Time for God, Chinaman's Chance. Oh, Paul. that was the one I directed, uh, uh, Jason Connery. Oh, okay. So you for, directed, for directed a day. scenes from it. It was on Chinaman's Chance. Yeah. Okay. Once Call of the Wild, An American Girl, and Pound of Flesh, which is, brings us right back here. Well, those are all independents. Your, your, your last five and your first five. The first five were, well, the first one was a... Uh, Independent, but then they became studio pictures, and I became a, a marketable star, and I was mm -hmm. with the big leagues. Yeah, and um, and I fell from grace, <laughs> uh, and um, you know it's kind of like uh, what's that movie where uh, that one they just released, Ides of March, where Brian. where he says uh, the kid who plays the st who's the star now, he started out yeah, Brian Dawson, yeah, with the yeah. 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 I was thinking Lars and the 
than the mannequin. <laughs> he has a line. He says, this is a big leagues and what is it? You don't get a second chance if you do something, that's it. So I think that kind of happened to me. Wow. I'm very happy where I am now in my life. By falling from grace from Hollywood and the studios and, and the big agents and being part of the big leagues and making the millions of dollars, I went out into the world and I got to sail the South Pacific on beautiful schooners. I got to work with real open range trail horses with real guys. Um, I got to build a house and on my, I had a lot of free time. I, I, I raised four wonderful kids. My oldest is 35 now. He's a horse doctor and a great surfer. My other, my other boy, they all went to college. They all live in California, right? Uh, Buckeyes in Maui. Uh -huh. Bodie's hopefully going to go to Maui and uh -huh. work, sell some real estate over there, help his brother. Uh -huh. And my daughter, she's looking for a job. She graduated from UCSB. And then my youngest, Ben, graduated from Montana State Architect School. But mm. Wonderful human beings. Mm. Great people. Mm. Had a great mother, had two different mothers. The last three, uh, was a wonderful mother. First one was a good mom, too. Mm -hmm. Artists. Mm -hmm. uh, the two women that I married were artists. Um, so I am satisfied. So you had a fulfilling life. I've had a, a you very fulfilling life. Early on, that you really wanted to be a veterinarian. Well, my son became one. So you've been allowed that, to do uh, a lot yeah. of work. I'm a, with, I'm a really good vet tech. <laughs> you you really care about animals. Yeah. Oh, very very much so. I mean that that the whole ethics of the horse and and its place in history with man, mm -hmm. I hold in high regard. We would not be here today if it weren't for the the uh, the noble horse. Suppose Coppola came along with, uh, you know, half a million dollars and said, "I want to do a oh, piece." Wouldn't on even. I and want, hire me. I, I want to do a piece on your on your horse farm and your whole. Yeah, life. baby, let's and, go. And, and yeah. Spend whatever you want. Don't give me a dime. Yeah. Hey, John Steinbeck wrote a novel about my ranch oh, okay. called "To a God Unknown." My favorite writer. I to a God that. Unknown. Wow. Have you read it? No. Read it. It's all about my home. My adobe was built 1771 uh, at the request of Father Vinipero Serra. I'm going to write that down while we got one. At the, at the request of Father Vinipero Serra and the direction of Father Sihar, 1771. It was a halfway station between the Mission San Antonio de Padua and the Soledad. It's up in Lucia. It's the Lucia Mountains, yes. Oh. Very old. It's probably one of the oldest occupied adobes in California. Wow. Mm. And after East of Eden, I, I went up for a reading that stuff. of some stuff and I met Tom Steinbeck. His son. Yeah. yeah, and Tom said, you know what, that ranch you own is the basis for my dad's book to a god unknown. Uh -huh. So read it, and it's all about the homesteads, and of course mm. everybody dies. Mm. But uh, my dream would to be to go up to Carmel and beg Mr. Clint Eastwood. Yeah, you, know, <laughs> you, know, you shouldn't have to, to beg him. Oh yeah. Do Steinbeck. Yeah. He hasn't done Steinbeck. He's done everything to, else. To a God unknown. To a God unknown. Mm -hmm. And shoot at their own location. Yeah. Would be, yeah, that'd be a, a, a very fulfilling in my life. One other great creation from that area is Robert Robinson Jeffers. He's I mean, just over the hill. One of the greatest poets. Yeah, he's just over the hill. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, Henry Miller is right. Is still well, I, and well, I know well, Valentine Day's daughter. Really? Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, Miller wrote beautifully about that yeah. whole area. But uh, if Francis wants to do that, I would say, yeah, whatever Francis wants. No, but I mean, you read the book, so. Oh, I'd like to play the homestead of the guy that dies yeah. on the, in the spring at the yeah. end. Yeah. You know. Okay, well, I have a few friends who know him, so if you want. We you can know pass. He, knows, he knows me. He, I, I'm sure he does. I, I know Francis, and yeah. he knows of me, and he knew Sam. He was very, very... He confided some things into Sam. Was well, Sam also, you know, really into uh, horses and? He loved them, but we surfed a lot together and played yeah. a lot of golf. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Sam um, was very cerebral, so the fact that he lost half his brain to uh, malignant cancer was mm -hmm. really ironic as hell. Uh -huh. And and to be there with him those last couple of months and to help out. Um, it was very difficult, particularly after him dying in my arms in the last picture show. I just find that very, very difficult to see that. Anymore. That's such a beautiful, I mean, it really is, it ripped my guts out when I saw it, you know, and it, he was just sweeping, isn't that what you're saying? Yeah, but I mean, in the reality of life, in this, yeah. Yeah. while we're 
manifested before we go back to the dust. It's like, what is this all about? How can these things happen? Is there some master plan? Yeah. Was that some kind of preparation for the actual death? You yeah. never know. You don't know how it all turns out. We don't. That's the mystery of this wonderful life. You have two other wonderful brothers. I do, Joseph and Benjamin. Right, and, and what are they doing these days? Joseph went through a cancer the same time yeah. Sam did, uh, but it was a throat cancer. He's on the mend. He has two beautiful daughters, and he sells my father's art and lots of other art for people. And he seems to be very happy. Benjamin married um, uh, Sarah Chamberlain, and, and um, they have a wonderful life on it beautiful big ranch in San Inez. It's hmm. like a third generation family. There. Santa Barbara. San, yeah, they're saying they got like yeah. 10,000 acres back there. Yeah. And Ben paints and uh, he's had some interesting work. He, hmm. Benjamin uh, took his mule over and worked for uh, Anita Vale on Santa Rosa Island for a couple of years. And um, hmm. he does hunts, you know, with Brooks Firestone and those guys when they ride around huh. chasing hounds. And uh -huh. He loves whales and they travel. Uh, I think he's very happy. He's a very good painter. And he's a very good actor, excuse me, too. He's a wonderful stage actor. Right. I don't well, know what, what, do you, what do your parents think of the four of you? I mean, they must be I think they're very proud. fabulously. Yeah. I think they're very proud. My dad four. writes once in a while, and he okay. says, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, whenever someone comes up and says, that, uh, I think Timothy has done some really wonderful acting. He says, I'm very proud of that. Yeah, but you know he's wonderful. he's a master sculptor in his own way, right. and finally found it late, late in life. And and my mom is uh, writing, hmm. and um, so they're still basically healthy. And yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I I think my mom's gonna help live me for sure. <laughs> Did they, they ever come up to your ranch? Or? Yeah, they helped me in the, in the beginning years enormously. In fact, that's where my dad, while I was working a lot, that's where my father uh, just you know, gave up working for the technological military aspects of uh, weapon development and, mm -hmm. and said, I'm going to go back to my art, yeah. which mm -hmm. is what it is. And, and he chose the dolphins and um, became very close with Rick Berry and John mm -hmm. Lilly. Oh, yeah, yeah. And okay. Now, if you ever see his art, it's uh, he's a master sculptor, mm -hmm. really, as he does very cool stuff. If, if you go down to the, who are the guys that um, give the free appendages to the children? The Shriners? Shriners, yeah. Go I worked, the, go I worked the, the, for their hospital for 20 years. Did you, have you been there recently? Yeah. yeah. Did you see the boy on the dolphin? Yeah. That's yeah. my dad. Oh, okay. That's my father's art. That's that was one of his first gifts. He was born in Santa Monica, had a club foot. They yeah. helped him. Yeah. And so he made that gift to the Shriners. So when the kids learn to walk with their legs or use their arms, there's that little boy, which is my son, Buckeye. Okay. On this, this is a perfect place to end. I, I yeah, love this. That was really Thanks so much. You're welcome. Okay.